this point in time, the speaker has already given the access to the chamber. Where His Excellency Dr. Dauda Lawa will present the budget to the House. As part of the procedure, Thank 
Bible system. However, our administration has been proactive in implementing a priority reforms. We have put in place a legal framework aimed at promoting efficient, accountable, and sustainable governance. The 2024 budget aptly tagged the rescue budget. Have been meticulously designed with a key focus on precision and foresight. This budget takes into account the set of affairs in our states and makes elaborate provision to address the other needs of our dear states. Through a rigorous process, allocation of various sectors of our economy have been made outside careful concentration by our executive estimates committee and entire state council in conformity with the strategic objective and priorities of my administration. The rescue budget therefore is not just a financial plan. It is a blueprint for building a new number states designed to navigate us through challenging times and pave the way for a more prosperous future. This project is a reflection of people's opinion from the grassroots. Before coming up with this proposal, town hall meetings were conducted across the general council of the state in order to receive input from the people and the entire public. Our intention is to ensure that our policies align with the yearning of the public. As we reflect on the national economic outlook, the first half year of 2023 came with formidable challenges. We grappled with the myriad of problems hampering the effective performance of non all revenue streams, high crude oil prices, and its attendant impact on the petroleum subsidies. These issues led to the inflationary failure, depleted foreign and trade reserve, increased external debt, and slugging GDP growth, thereby exacerbating fiscal instability and economic slowdown. Consequently, we witnessed food scarcity, a rise in the level of unemployment, and heightened poverty level across the country. The federal government success reforms, particularly in removing the fields of peace and revising the temporary framework, have been instrumental in stabilizing the macro environment and mitigating the impact of these challenges on the country. The instrument of our industry has signaled a transformative shift for Zambia State. Within the past seven months, our administration has accomplished novel achievements in fighting security, infrastructure development, investing in human capital, and concerted effort towards reforming the public service. It is not of a statement to say that the state is undergoing a comprehensive transformation across various economic reforms. To further this achievement, we are committed to maintaining due process, transparency, and accountability, especially in financial deals. We are committed to fostering collaboration with development partners and the private sector to support economic growth in our states. Mr. Speaker, honorable members, the 2023 budget is strategically crafted to focus on six key factors of priority security, education, agriculture, 
economic growth, health and infrastructures. These are my vital in preparing the project towards enduring development. In a few months since we have seen all this, our administration has introduced new policies aimed at enhancing public service. The economy and the future of our communities. We initiated the infrastructure, the structure of government, ministries, departments, and agencies to create a manageable and functional government structures aligned with global best practice and supported by appropriate legal framework. In the we have commenced the preaching of 4,700 community protection guards across the state. The first project of 2,645 guards currently on the government training. This initiative, which is part of our community engagement strategy, aims to address the limitation of our conventional security agencies and provide job opportunities while enhancing our ground fighting <coughs> capabilities. To ensure sustainability and affordability of new security architecture, we establish the State Security Trust Fund, managed by Board of Trustees, of both of retired senior security officers and reputable community members. This fund will support both new security outfits and conventional security agencies. In the area of social protection and inclusion, we have renovated and revitalized our rehabilitation centers. We have also reconstructed the orphanage, underlining our commitment towards creating a conducive environment for every citizen to be a meaningful life, regardless of their health or social conditions. In our public service reform agenda, we have constituted the Public and Civil Reform Committee and the Public Finance Management Committee, comprising experienced public office holders and technocrats. These committees are tasked with among others, identifying gaps within the MDs, recommending recruitment opportunities, and formulating strategies for transparent and accountable government. Review of the 2023 budget. Mr. Speaker, honorable members, we are aware that the 2023 budget was prepared and presented before the House of the previous administration. The sum of 188,522,257,000 was presented as the total estimate for the year, and it was based on projected recurrent revenues and capital receipt of 96 million. 227,000 and 84,556,000,000 respectively. The corresponding recurrence and capital activity were 91,032,207,000,000 and 92,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,
Bible the Ruth of Smith, book of 122 billion, 100 million, and 67 billion, 400 million as current and capital revenue, respectively. This was typically broken down into 94 billion, 900 million, and 94 billion, 700 million as recurrent and capital expenditure. The review has definitely set the ball rolling for archaeological and priority areas for the rescue of Zafara State. <laughs> By the end of that quarter of the year under review, precisely the end of September, the implementation of 20 and C project recorded modest achievement concerning downtown of economic activities in the country. On the overall performance, the total of 78 billion two hundred and forty-nine million nine hundred and fifteen seven hundred and fifty-eight thousand has been realized as acute revenue, which is at about 41.2%. Highlights of the proposed 2024 budget. Policy objectives. All existing policy measures will continue in the 2024 fiscal year. That is number one. Number two, the proposed budget of 223% higher than the revised budget of the current year. Number three, the proposed budget is consistent within strategic plans and our long term vision. Number four, it gives emphasis to citizen nominated projects. And some programs also considered to have a direct bearing on the yearning and aspirations of our people. Five, the proposed budget is balanced as projected revenue equals the estimated expenditure. Twenty twenty four budget proposal. Mr. Speaker, distinguished honorable members, the Zamprasim proposed 20 and budget is estimated at 423 billion and this is broken down into 160 billion, 425 million, 64 and 263 billion, 98 million, 666 out of that for and capital receipt perspective. These revenue are based on multiple grant resources in order to make the fiscal reliable, coherent, and consistent with our medium and long term strategic plans. Similarly, the IR has a corresponding expenditure of our one hundred and eighteen billion, one hundred and thirty four million, seven hundred and thirty thousand for the current of the current component and three hundred and five billion, three hundred and eighty nine million for the capital component. Some major capital projects to be executed in the year 2024.
2024. Now, more construction of Maldana to Bukim Road, which is 17. Number two, Bukim Tibetan Zaba. Then we at the Mariki to the court to Atinge Road and Barayazai to the National Association. Maran to Magami to Paru Road. Magami, Dangulbi, Dangulbi, so Dangul Bagega to Anka. We start the journey to do what we have to do. We have to do what we have to do. We have to do what we have to do. The pilot bridge will be constructed. Now down at Bagega, Mokemi and Galati, Jangiru, Thank you. 
conversation in these the US TV. Mm -hmm. Allah. Oh. On this case, Mr. Speaker, Honorable Members, I have the pleasure to present the appropriation bill for the year 2024 to the tune of 423 billion. 
excellence in peace, wait and meeting the remaining house proceedings. Well, given the occupation will it is suffering with.
for the staggering nature of the state revenue program. In this regard, the House has already marked out strategic activity that will ensure checks and balances in all the revenue generating agencies. This derive was proposed by the growing concern on how some revenue generating agencies operate with the largely and irregularities. While focusing on this area, I'm appealing to family members of the media, civil society organizations, general public and other stakeholders to give us their support in order to achieve the most desired result of improving our economic status through other means rather than way. This idea will bring around the change we need and the state of our collective need. Your Excellency, Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, let me use the medium and tell you that the House is working towards a legislative agenda that will guide its operations for a four years' time. This is simply to minimize unnecessary inhibition that will arise from time to time. The brief review on the previous budget through oversight function conducted by various committees has clearly given us a direction on how to best work along with the other arms of government and the chain generated. On our security situation of the state, which is part of the sixth point agenda of this administration, I want to recommend the excellency for the recruitment of 4,300 community protection guards to support the financial security in addressing the menace. <laughs> I hope the general public will give them all the necessary support at all times. Distinguished colleagues, His Excellency has presented the budget. 423 billion, 523 million, 730,000 dollars for the fiscal year 2024, which capital expenditure taking the highest amount. This shows the seriousness and the intention of this administration for a better social economic development that will rescue and restore the glory of the country. As the lawmakers, therefore, we want to assure His Excellency that we will follow all the legislative process and pass it into the law within the shortest possible time for implementation. Finally, I want to thank the good people of Zampara State for their trust and the confidence of this administration will do everything possible to ensure your safety and well-being, inshallah. Thank you. Honorable members, due to His Excellency, very tight setting, it is your wish that we give the bill, that we will give the application bill, which is uh, certainly those who support the election say hi. Hi. Yes, I can say it. Yes, I can say it. Mr. Clark, keep it in. It's a family. Our first of the July Human Action Manor of Jim, this is the July Manor of Jim. Your Excellencies, the Governor and Deputy Governor of San Francisco, Mr. Speaker, sir, honorable members, this bill is being in law to provide for the issue and appropriation from the Consolidated Revenue Fund of the State, the sum of 423 
three billion five hundred and twenty three million seven hundred and thirty thousand naira only. Second reading. The law to provide for the issue and appropriation of the concentrated revenue fund of the state, the sum of four hundred and thirty-three billion three hundred and five hundred and twenty-three million. Seven hundred and thirty thousand naira was given in certain regions. Honourable members, uh, which committee do you prefer the motion? Either side of the committee. Or we can do.